Happy Friday, everybody. Hey. Oh, jeez. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Sorry. It's February 3rd. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's not good. I could taste that over here. It gave me a little bit of ugh. indigestion, yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody, we're going to do the Weird Things podcast in uh, a few minutes. Thank you for joining us. We beat the snow. We beat the cold. Beat the ice. Beat the ice. Yeah, apparently the worst ice storm in Austin since the 70s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, Avery something, a, a, a local weather person here breaking it down. You know, two years ago we had the ba the bad freeze, but then now, yeah, that was, that was four consecutive winter storms, one after another after another, and then also last year we had a really hot spring and summer. Yeah, and so it just ended up being this hot, cold, hot, cold. Mostly for the, the trees. trees. The trees are the problem. That's where all the damage is. That's where all the uh, power outage. Bryce, what, uh, what's your power situation? I I have power again. I I got power last yesterday afternoon. Nice. Um, uh, a but a buddy of mine I think may still be out of power. He was at least earlier this morning. Um, they're saying today this evening will be when most everybody. Yeah, they back they had up. initially said that they they were they wanted everybody to have their power back by this afternoon, and then uh. They had a press conference yesterday where they're like, hey, we don't know because we keep yeah. fixing things and then things keep falling into the power line. So uh, no promises, but we're working as fast as we can. Yeah. And that's tough because it's like you you can't you don't know what tree is going to fall. You don't know what brand. I mean, it's you don't know what don't know. trees are going to fall. <laughs> Who are you? The, the tree, tree master. Oh, I know that that branch is going to fall in 42 days. Yeah, you don't know. No. Cliff Singer got power back just before five o'clock yesterday. Yeah, that was about mine, about three o'clock. There are some crazy pictures from out here yesterday. Uh, the the trail through Brian's backwoods were like oh. like a video game, menacingly closed by sloping frozen trees. Mm. It was it was like a scene from the Last of Us HBO show. Because of all the walking, you couldn't do. Oh no! I've made a. I've I've resolved now. Nothing. Anything I'm not uh, that I don't like. I'm oh, just gonna say I haven't seen it. I have heard about this. I haven't seen it. Interesting. Interesting. We'll see whether or not I'll see the next episode of The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, how you feeling? I feel great. I feel great. Yeah. Rules. Nice to work at a quiet company. There, there's just really not much yeah. going on. Yeah. Just, yeah. Quiet. Just you know. Keep keeping to themselves. Totally yeah. Totally chill. Yeah. Just, just, just trying normal. to make it out there. Un, 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 uncontroversial, yeah. swimming under the radar. In the shadows. Yeah. Just nobody yeah. caring. Yeah. Yeah. Doing your thing. That's the way That's to be. Cool. Under uh, on the DL, on the download. Certainly not the fastest growing tech product by membership, right? Or by by users. I mean, there are lots of numbers and things out there. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's just so many good numbers out there, but we don't. We're big you never know. You never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. Just like you don't know when a tree's going to fall. Let, let's go ahead and get this party started. All right, Andrew. I'll count you in for the weird things. Oh, actually, Andrew, before we start, can I maybe tap on your mic for me? Just make sure you got the right one. I think you do. Yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, then I'll count you in for the weird things. Sorry. Totally not work. Just called me asking for something. Oh, <laughs> Dude, you can take a minute. <laughs> I uh, oh I, I don't know if this should be an after things thing Justin or a great night thing but I have I have thoughts about something y'all brought up on to on Thursday on the bone what is it about uh re accepting or denying help <laughs> oh yeah oh because yeah. people were yeah, yeah we 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 mentioned that yeah people were uh people without power hmm. I had invited a bunch of people over and some uh a few wound up taking me up yesterday but. Before that, it was it was uh, it was interesting to see folks not wanting to leave their house. Yeah, well, I have some I have some insights on that because well, you were in, one of those people. I was one of those people, and I've got insights on that. Yeah, you did. So yeah, that's that's a good great night. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Bryce has insights, everybody. <laughs> Brin insights. Brins. Brin insights. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Andrew. All right, Andrew. We're gonna get started here for the Weird Things podcast in. Three, two. 
Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, acquaintances. Gentlemen. And all the ships at uh, sea. I don't know if you've watched this yet, but uh, you see a thing, and it's one of these moments where everybody kind of sees it and can, can see, even in its imperfect form, that, oh, yeah, this... This could be going somewhere at some point. Maybe not this particular iteration, but the concept of it. And I'm talking about the hit new Twitch stream, Nothing Forever. I was just going to, to I was going to jokingly say you were talking about Nothing Forever. I know I am talking about Nothing Forever. So Justin, you guys do you know Nothing a, Forever? I, indeed, I do uh, uh, know Nothing Forever. This is the Twitch stream uh, that is ongoing, wherein. Uh, virtualizations of AI generated Seinfeld scripts play 24 7, 365, theoretically. Except for it. Yeah. So it's, I think they're using like a Unity backend. So, and so it's a very I heard the funniest thing this morning blocky getting... backend, blocky imaging. But I think they're using GPT to do the, uh, the scripts. The scripts. Mm hmm. Which uh, I would like to talk to them because I can give them some ideas on how to make them a little more <laughs> engaging. But that being said, is you're watching these virtual characters that's a knockoff of Seinfeld, and it's a continuous stream. It's just the AI continuously has the stories and these little segues and their own sort of version of Seinfeld music. Um, it is just this kind of crazy sort of concept. But you get into, and this is a thing we've talked about before, where... We try. We imagine the future is sort of shinier, bigger versions of what we have right now. When the future yeah. could actually be radically different. Like we're doing a show right now to explain to somebody what we were doing thirty years ago. You know, like well, you know, uh, nascent internet maybe, but like it'd be really hard to sort of wrap your head around. Well, we all got video cameras in our houses. We've all got microphones. We can all sit there and do a thing, and we can do a show that might get more people watching than a cable show, and. Here, when you look at generative AI, when AI can can create, not only create, but can create nonstop 24-7, why not create a channel that's just, and it's hard to wrap our head around that, well, what's the narrative? And it's like, well, sometimes we just like stuff on. We like screensavers or lo-fi music or whatever. And if you have a, have a concept or material where it's just Every few minutes, there's maybe a real joke or a real beat or this continuous sort of thing, and you see something magical happen. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I, 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 uh, I, I, I feel like I caught just as this uh, at the as this was blowing up. But there's there's something to the nonsensicalness of of what AI just loose AI generation can turn into, along with. Um, you know, the contemporary idea of Seinfeld, right? The show about nothing. Um, and so you have this interesting abstract framework where you can, where you can have a script that's, that's just, oh my gosh, did you see the spinach the other day? There's a new, did you see the new rest? Like, like it's all it, 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 it is. Did you see the new restaurant? Did you see the new whatever? Um, zhuzh it up, it's cut, cuts, like it's great. It's really, really smart. Um, and it's, it's a great way to start something like this, right? We'll see more stuff like this. I mean, the, the other thing is like, it, yeah, this, this whole 3D space where they've got different, different stages from the Seinfeld show or a 90s like sitcom. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's my question. This is not in any way uh, a, a officially sponsored or blessed by the, the, the people who own Seinfeld, right? No, the, the names right. are different. It's like Larry. Oh, and, gotcha. And uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that, but so but, this is this is this is an, an an homage. And you know the other funny part about this particular uh, situation is that uh, it does not blow up like this if Twitch doesn't exist, a place where people come to sit and watch live streamed content. And you often have uh, Larry Feinberg as the, uh, the, the the Seinfeld. Yeah, they even have like stand up scenes. So he'll just it's just him at the mic doing us doing doing stand up. Yeah. Uh, it's it really is such a such an amazing confluence and and when you look at stuff like that you you start to get a glimpse of of of, of a flicker of what the future will include i'm not even going to say what will what it will be like but what 
it it it, it can include because you've got this gathering place for twenty four seven live content, uh, an expectation of a certain level of artistic, uh, or meme merit, right? Uh, and now this this uh, a technological solution has taken advantage of that platform and and found uh, an immediate audience. I mean, this thing started streaming when it was only a few days ago, right? I, yeah, I, I feel like I saw it maybe Friday, and it was that was before it was blowing up, and now it's got almost twelve thousand viewers in the middle of the we, day on Friday as we record this. If you wanted to right now, you could build interdimensional cable from like Rick and Morty. You could do that now. They might. Be, they like, might need to. Be they have. They have. The, they have. They have a one ad out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you could you could create that concept though of like this channel or just these channels of just stuff that exists in parallel universes. You know, right now it'd have to be like game engine, like what they're using here. But eventually it could be, and like that's that's a crazy thing to think about, like where generative video content is going is going to be. It's just insane. If you wanted to do a South Park, just endless South Park right now, that'd actually be technically technically easier than what they did here if you're talking about the bare code of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the voices they're using too, by the way, are like uh, uh, not the best that are out there. Like voice qualities come so much better. So yeah, uh, if we want, we can maybe tune in a little bit and hear what what's going on and mm. nothing forever. Let's see. Burr, burr, burr. Is it special espresso beans or something? <laughs> no, it's just that espresso naturally has no sugar. I guess we should have known that our coffee-loving friend Larry here was in the know. <laughs> and there's always there's always a a good awkward si silence between the different scene changes. Yeah. But they even work in little little music to sound like the, the Seinfeld. Oh man. Uh no, it, it's it, it is it is fascinating. I do I love the idea of AI generated content that can bring us and take us to places for which we haven't been. And and I think the part of the reason why this succeeds is because, you know, Seinfeld is you know, is the most popular sitcom of all time is that uh, I don't know it'd be in in rare air if it's not that official title, but one of the most iconic for sure. Uh, yeah. So it's like there's there's certainly a a hunger for it. It has survived into the streaming era and remained viable. So the idea of what if Seinfeld, what if there were new Seinfelds, is is a, a meme thing that has been around for a while, right? There's like modern day Seinfeld and, and stuff like that, like Twitter yeah. accounts or Instagrams. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, this is taking that to the extreme. Congratulations. There's new Seinfeld on right now and it's going 24 seven and it's always a new episode. Well, and, and this is, you know, when, when we've talked about say automation or AI, um, you know, I, I certainly myself as a creative and technical professional, have always felt a certain amount of like, well, I will always have this animus that I can bring, I can bring a human element to the stuff that will be very difficult to outsource or to automate away. But I also think that there is space uh, for even our environment, our landscape today for all automated media. Um, I, th I, it, 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 uh, for example, like take this nothing forever project that we're talking about. Yes. It's, it's, it's a little junk. It's a little clunky, right? You know, it, there's silences. Sometimes it breaks. Um, the, the, the scripts are not always great, but if this was a world where this was part of a, if Netflix did a thing like this and did it X percent better, this could sit alongside Stranger Things or a, a, a Queen's Gambit. Like this, this can fit in in folks's I don't know balance of media because it will be very different from human made things. Well, I, 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 not that it will always be yeah, good, but I, there I, will always they, like having that twenty four seven element. Is the, the, this kind of gets to Andrew's point that we often kind of think that like extrapolating the future is just taking what we have now and making it bigger and shinier and. Oh, where I think the folly of those kind of predictions come in are are not that they're not possibly valid and sometimes they're right. It's just that we are all okay at knowing where we are 
we're less good at knowing where we're going to be in a year. And that point degrades the further you go out, right? Or, or, or the further that you believe uh, things are going to go for them to, to reach a certain conclusion. What I think with AI is we are going to see a lot of people use it to do things and, and spark ideas uh, as, we, as we move forward. But the concept of fully AI-generated stuff uh, is, is in a weird place. Uh, humans have, have kind of seemed to be uh, uh, alternately like excited or on some level implicitly betrayed by the idea that something is fully uh, uh, generated by an alternate intelligence. If you don't tell them, I think it often is just like, oh, wow, what, what, a, what a great thing. What great art. Uh, yeah. if, if you tell them, then it's like, well, what are you trying to do? You just went to the answer machine and pulled out an answer, which right. is, uh, uh, I think, on, on one level, a material step up from believing that AI is magic, right? <laughs> like, at least now <laughs> yeah. we're looking at it as something uh, a, a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more grounded in reality, although probably not a great uh, descriptor for it. But I, I wonder, I mean, I think part of what makes this funny is the fact that it is this kind of minimum viable product. Like that's part of the charm for it. Whereas like if this were photorealistic, if this, if all of a sudden this channel was, it looked almost identical to Watching Seinfeld. To watching Seinfeld, episodes. but you change the hair colors and the names. The conversation around this would be a lot different. It would be a little bit less, oh, uh, LOL, what a hilarious art project, and a little bit more, what, the, what, what, what do you boys think you're fooling here? I think there's such... There is... Brian, Brian uh, those of you don't know, Brian Brushwood <laughs> is sometimes on our podcast. He's a guest at times. And uh, he's not here, but uh, Brian has this theory, and I, I may be mis misattributing this the way that he says it, but because he he assumes that some shows that don't quite fully catch his interest were designed with the idea that Brian would be texting or doing something else, you know. So Brian, like, oh, I think they because he said this before, like, I think they wrote it because like they know people are doing something. I'm like, it sounds like a very Brian universe, a very very Brian type universe. That being said. That's how a lot of people consume content while they're multitasking. Yeah. And in a multitasking world where you're playing a game or doing something else, this could be the perfect kind of content because there are people that just want to leave a TV on. They want something in the background. The number of people still pay for, like, I'm amazed that there are people that watch TV with commercials. Like, I haven't done that in 20 years. Like, and I can't, I have to wrap my head around the idea that there are people that sit through commercials. But for some people, they just want, something on yeah yeah you know i i i think that there is something to uh, all information on some level has to be passive to a certain extent right like even even movies which you know for forever were dominated in the idea of like you're gonna watch it in a cinema you need to be paying attention to it the entire time now we live in a fractured world for that for podcasting I, i'm actually just in the process of working with a few people on developing a show that did not have a lot of production on it. It exists and they want to make it, you know, more nice. production, uh, uh, production y, yeah. right? And so I was trying to explain, we're in the process now of, of me explaining my concept of and philosophy of, of uh, audio beds, music beds for certain stuff, and where I think it is incredibly important to passively explain to the listener not only that. We are done with this subject. We are now moving on to another subject, but also to Andrew's point to in a passive medium and podcasting is a passive medium. We are, we are, you know, uh, we cannot compete with you driving. <laughs> like we don't, we don't want you to be focusing on it so much that you can't do that. Hey, don't forget your blinker. So audio beds are something that you need to have to snap people back to, Oh, okay, wait, hold on. Maybe you need to listen to this. Let me, uh, uh, Everything else I can just kind of, you know, a, a chat GPT generate like, okay, they were talking about the price of beef. So this is probably about where beef comes from or yada, yada, yada. But then if it's, but that's the moment that the beef robbery happened, 
like we want you to materially start thinking about something else and mm -hmm. uh, uh that is that's that's a huge 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 element it, like it is it is a part of art and the more we have abilities to portray art the more we have to understand that people are watching it for different reasons yeah i mean a e even i mean if i'm if i'm just like predicting right if we're just predicting the wild future yeah i i could even rice see... predicts <laughs> wah, 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 wah. i could like I, I initially i thought well okay so maybe something like this lives um in the same channels as as a netflix as a hulu as a disney plus what have you right this is one of a one of multiple streaming options that is you know available ubiquitously but at the same time you look at how much processing power everyone just has on them in their pocket at any given point. Even even older cell phone devices are are are, are pretty good. Um, I could imagine instead of say paying for Netflix to watch their movie files, you could buy the buy the nothing forever, and it's for you. And it's just what you're it's you're watching it, and it's coming up with the scripts just for you, and it's not. You know, like I, I, I it, it, it's, it's, it's something I guess a little different from hard and fast visual data of a TV show or a movie. Um, but it's not exactly a video game, but it could be some sort of soft. Is it? Am I? Am I? Am I? Am I losing the thread here? No, this, I, I, I think. I think there? you know, as far as predictions go, which I mean, who knows? Like, I think that it's it's an interesting one because it gets to the heart of whether or not art should be communal or personal. Mm. You know, what, what would you rather a, a poem that speaks very specifically to you, but you cannot meaningfully share in the same way, or one that you could share with everybody else who might have those same feelings that you feel like, I think one would certainly go for a lot of money. The personal one, I don't know if it would be as impactful. I don't know if, if once people got it, they would want it in the same kind of way, but who knows? I, I guess, it, um, the parallel in my head I'm thinking of is to uh, uh, Cory Doctorow in one of his books, Makers, uh, comes up. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good book and a very interesting thought experiment of what if Disney just made a 3D printer and the 3D printer took over a room in your house and every day it just 3D printed a new Disney experience in your home. That's one of the many things in that book. But there's something really personal to that, to feeling like, oh, this is actually, this is not just the this is not just the movie that someone shot. This is like my little toy box and, and there's controls or there's tuning, however. Um, and there's, you know, but like something beyond, like I sit down and I click play. Like, I think that's where something like this exists beyond sit down, press play. Yeah. Uh, uh the, the possibilities, Bryce <laughs> are endless. But what's not endless mm -hmm. is patreon.com slash weird things. Oh, we head on over to patreon.com slash weird things. You can support us on this program at the After Things Podcast before anybody else. Folks, thank you. Mm -hmm. If you have headed on over to patreon.com slash weird things. And thank you again if you are planning on doing it right now. Patreon.com slash weird things. There has been a sighting. Have you seen this? You heard about this 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 balloon that was visible over the U.S. <laughs> in Montana. The Chinese surveillance balloon. What? No, I yeah. heard this. Is there? A, I hope there's not a boy in this one either. No, but, uh, but although my favorite meme of it was like we're assembling a crack team to take it down, and it was like balloon boy and uh, 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 you know David Blaine holding a balloon, like it's <laughs> the Avengers, the balloon Avengers. So what was this, Andrew? So apparently defense officials, U.S. defense officials have said that they believe that a Chinese spy balloon drifted over Mont Montana and uh, there's possibly a second incident reported by Canadian authorities. Ha so. <laughs> wow. Um, usually, the, usually, I guess the covert operations tend to be covert. Yeah, you should have at least painted this. I should have painted like it blue. Yeah, <laughs> I should have painted it blue. Kind of stands out against yeah. the night sky or the, the the day sky here. This light blue sky. 
Wow. All right, so this is um, from... This is not yeah. the first time a Chinese balloon has been spotted over the U.S., but this seems to be acting differently to previous ones, a U.S. defense official said. It's appearing to hang out for a longer period of time this time around and more persistent than in previous instances. That would be one distinguishing factor. On Friday, Beijing claimed the balloon, balloon was a civilian airship used mainly for weather research that deviated from its planned course. The statement by spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry is the first admission that the airship originated in China since the Pentagon revealed it was tracking the balloon on Thursday. You know how um, you, it takes you a long time to just say it's a research balloon? <laughs> A and civilian, a civilian research balloon. That's definitely yeah. a thing, you know. So why why use a balloon? People go, we have satellites. Uh, according to a person they spoke to, some of these systems use extremely high frequencies that are short range, can be absorbed by atmosphere. And so by using a balloon, you can basically collect information on our communication systems and radar. Really? Yeah, because that was the other yeah. big question that I saw people online, uh, which, again, it's it's Twitter, so I would not expect that our, our best and brightest are asking their most pertinent, serious questions. It's a bunch of memes. But the question was why it was following the path that it was following, because it was largely through, uh, you know, Montana down into the Midwest. Yeah, very uh, conspicuous targets. No, not Not the immediate target you would think of. Well, but or like there are the United States has a lot of bases, a lot of places, you know, throughout the middle of the country that probably places that if, if we don't know about it, that's that's to the better for them. Mm. Uh, if, if you know, I, I think the, the bigger question here is like, it, it, was this on purpose? Is this a mistake? <laughs> like uh, uh, this seems a little audacious. It's they're certainly caught red handed if it is intentional. <laughs> How do, how do you how do you how would you deny it? What would you do? Wouldn't you you would do anything well, other uh, other than admit it? No, it's a it's scientific research. We do we do weather balloons all the time. They end up over drifting over other countries. That that happens. That that mm -hmm. so there's nothing outrageous about the idea of a balloon drifting over another sovereign country. The challenge is you know, defining what the purpose are. And this was, they said, this behaved not like a weather balloon. This behaved really odd, mm. like its ability to hover and keep stay in certain spots. And like, I think that theory that, yeah, it's, it's actually listening in on, it's not looking at us. It's listening to a radio communications and trying to understand what the radar systems do. So. Yeah. Do you believe that this is a spy balloon, Andrew? hundred percent. It feels like everybody is acting like it is not just a weather balloon. <laughs> it feels like like the response feels very spy satellite satellite or well, a spy balloon. Well, you look at the response. images of it, and it's got a ton of antennas on it. Yeah, it's yeah, got it, like this array of all these antennas. They look like solar. It looks like the space station. Yeah, they look like solar panels that you would see on a satellite, almost. Or Might be that too. radio like, antennas. Radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is clearly. If it was a purely meteorological whatever, you would kind of give some headway. This is more. Bryce, look up, look up a picture of a weather balloon. I don't even know what a weather balloon would look like. Because uh, for, for only audio listeners of you, and I've not seen pictures of this, it, it is a gigantic white balloon that is floating over America uh, with an array of, and, and granted these pictures are grainy, but it looks as if there are a bunch of black antennas in the way that you would see them at, a large like sporting event or something, uh, something that you would you would need to keep thousands of people's cell phones on. Uh, 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 that is the array. So this is uh, this is an image of a research weather balloon I found. It's a similar big white uh, 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 inflated balloon portion, but with a a, a a little bit of a an '80s cell phone kind of attached to the string, mm. about five five feet down. Not a gigantic array of radio antennas, and it's it, it definitely doesn't look like the Hubble. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that I think it's the gigantic array of radio <laughs> antennas that I think gives <laughs> or it solar away. Solar panels or something. Or yeah, some, yeah. Someone, I I think someone was telling us that that it could the balloon itself could maneuver to to some degree. I don't I don't I don't know how much. That's that's we're getting into speculation, but, um, huh? Should we do? Should we retaliate? Should we go find their communicate? Should we should we retaliate? Do we make our own balloon? I mean, who says we? Yeah, I mean, I, I, every time I we hear 
it's not like our counterintelligence agencies are going, oh, what do we do now, guys? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think um, it is it is it is a lot of people's very, very, very high clearance, well paid jobs to glean the information that I assume the Chinese are trying to glean from us from them. Uh I don't I don't know if this is the best solution it certainly does have a uh, political ramifications our secretary of state anthony blinken canceled a trip to china uh in large part due to the the reaction of this wow uh although yeah, uh, that's that's also a very state department oh, you know sure. it's like if you do something bad we will cancel a meeting mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to call in sick. I'm going to, uh, oh, gonna we're going to bump this back down to our assistance assistance mm-hmm. talking about what we're going to talk about at our assistance meeting. If you keep mucking about. Co- I'm a code P over here. We're pushing. Code P. Code P. I didn't think it through very much, but. It's, I like it. It's, so- it's like nothing forever. <laughs> yeah, there is a. There is a very interesting story uh, that kind of that sort of made a little bit of noise, but then really didn't kind of get as much attention. I think in a book, I think it's called uh, the book Spy Fail, which talks about how uh, there was a high level like FBI agent who was actually a Chinese spy and was able to like report on like intelligence and people whatnot. Um, I mean, it's just a very... Very frustrating thing where they had this tremendous amount of suspicions about this person, but he'd been, a, been in a position to know who had been recruited and whatnot, and basically uh, may have led to the death of a number of people. Oh, that geez. Were, mm. That were assets that we had in China that all of a sudden just went missing. Goodness. And there is a really intense level of uh, conflict going on going on in this world and and for various reasons it doesn't get the kind of headlines that perhaps it should because when you hear about what goes on and you know and sometimes like you know the placement in some of these spies is just insane um so it's just it's just a very very interesting game because you understand that like we it was pretty devastating for us apparently because we had uh was an official that just had access to just a ton of information about that and then basically fled fled uh to China. I mean, fled to like Hong Kong or whatever, and we let them and we rested when we finally came back, but wow. just, I mean, uh, there's, there's someone had to be a mole, right? Someone had to be the, first, had to be a, like a legit, just entrenched mole. Wow. Yeah. And there's more of them. I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot. And it's, it's hard because it's this, we are a very open society, which means that we are very and mistaken allegations happen all the time. Let me make that very clear. But as kind of as a rule, the we'll have people we, we might suspect or might look suspicious, but we might be afraid to say, ah, let's really investigate this person further, arrest them and see what we know, because just not the way we sort of do things. Yeah. Um. Gosh, I, uh, yeah, that kind of that kind of leads into a pick of mine, but I don't, I don't want to jump into that just yet. But um, well, yeah, have you guys heard the, uh, the 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 news about the one of the big spy masters that was handling a lot of Russia stuff was being paid off by one of the uh, the biggest oligarchs out there in Russia, Oleg Dispersky? What? No. Yeah. Uh, they there was, were, there was, a, there was a, a crazy article about it where the lead, if I remember correctly, was this guy was dating a girl. All of a sudden, girl wakes up, is like, you know, getting ready for the day, sees a gigantic bag of cash uh, in their living room, and is like, what's up with the gigantic bag of cash? And he's like, oh, I made a bet last night, and I won. <laughs> and there oh. it is. A gigantic bag yeah, of cash. Yeah, let me correct. I kept saying FBI. I meant to say CIA. Uh, this was... Um, look up uh, Jerry Chun Ching Lee, ex CIA agent, and he was also one of these people that apparently this has happened before. Um, where you'll have somebody tasked with trying to identify like uh, moles and stuff like this, and there are more than once that's been the mole, yeah. And you know, that was there's the very prominent case with that. Um, wow, 
Jerry Chun Shing Li. Yeah, 19 years for us. That was like, yeah, Robert Hansen. Like Robert Hansen was the guy because they, they knew for years this he was the that Robert Hansen was the FBI agent that was doing that. And for years they knew there was some leak, some high level leak in the intelligence community. And they weren't sure who it was, but there was like, you know, like a code name for him. And Robert Hansen was the guy who was supposed to find him. <laughs> and guess what? Spoiler alert. Never did. It was him. Oh, uh, ooh. Wow. And, and that's the sort of thing you own. That This is like spy movie stuff, right? This is this is a spy movie story. Or, you know, oh. we would, I feel like we would be very if, more, if, more if, comfortable if, with it. Well, no. It, it, Check it, out it, the movie Breach based on it. Really, really good movie. Really, really tight thriller. Breach. Yeah. So I was going to say, if, if all spy movies weren't, uh, uh, the agency is trying to kill the spy or a rogue agent is taking on a current agent, right? Well, Andrew, yeah. that's, that's, that's one of the classic main <laughs> takes. Wait, what was that? Your, your, your theory that all spy movies are either the oh, agency yeah. is trying to kill the, a spy or a rogue agent is now trying to kill our main character who is also yeah, a spy. Yeah, or the rogue, or it's a rogue, yeah, rogue spy, rogue, rogue spy causing all the problems. I said this on Twitter and one of our friends had said, no, most of the James Bond movies have been pretty, have been, haven't, haven't been that way. And I listed how like the last eight James say, Bond uh, movies, uh, just, there was all. R.I.P. to that dude the second he hit tweet where it's like, look, if, yeah. if, if Maine has the time, he will, he will, he's brought the receipts. Well, because it was like, because they would often be in a passing sort of thing. You, in the movie, it might be like two sentences and you could watch it and never realize, oh, yeah, that person was a bad person, you know, bad because they were former rogue MI6, this yeah. or whatever. So, like, yeah, I didn't make that claim lightly. It was just this. I'd watch it again, like, oh shoot, this is the same plot point. But oh no, and this this is an old growth take of yours that I remember uh, at some point really gestating at a point that you had watched all of the James Bond movies, uh, uh, you know, like back to back to back. So I I, yeah. I very much uh, appreciated your, your your research on that. There was uh, well, that was also the thing. Every time they kept bringing back Mission before Mission Impossible got really good, yeah, it was the same story. And, and now they can kind of do the same story, but they do it in such an amazing way. I'm like, it's it's like its own genre. It's like Groundhog Day. It's like okay, hmm. well, know, yeah. I mean, is, this... it, it's it's funny. So my uh, father-in-law, my my wife's dad, was in town for two weeks, and he found every the three letter agency needs to bring back the agent for one last job movie that there are on Netflix. And I can tell you there is a week's worth. He, he watched <laughs> all of them back to back. Uh, and that's it. You are, you are a dead, right. Andrew, every time I walked in, it was because either the agency had become corrupt by a bad guy and they were looking to kill our hero or somebody was bad the agency's good and it's a rogue agent that is trying to you know hit hit our main character with a we're not so different you and i they'll turn against you too oh yeah or the yeah, yeah. the two agencies that are battling each other but both of the agencies are bad and so the two good people beat both of the agencies and they make their own good agency it's a good agency yeah we're good agency gaa <laughs> uh, i think i think andrew ass- was repped by gaa for a while <laughs> yeah yeah they're really Really hands on. Um, so, in uh, Robert Hansen was the subject of a 2002 made for television movie, Master Spy, the Robert Hansen story, with a teleplay by Norman Mailer and starring William Hurt as Hansen. Oh, wow. Hansen's jailers allowed him to watch this movie, but he was so angered by it that he turned it off. Oh, oh no. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, maybe he'll, maybe he watched it later. Is he still in jail? Like, yeah. Oh. Oh, maybe I'm looking at a different Robert Hansen. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the uh, the serial murderer. Oh, the serial uh, murderer. Okay. Yeah, no, this Robert Hansen's still alive. He is still alive and still in jail? Yeah. Yeah, 15 consecutive life sentences without parole at ADX oh, he, He's He's never getting out. He's, he's that category of, like, never getting out. Never, the level ever. ever. 15 life sentences, 15 consecutive life sentences. Uh, this is from Wikipedia. So, Hansen sold thousands of classified documents to the KGB detailing U.S. strategies in the event of nuclear war, development and military weapons technologies, and aspects of the U.S. counterintelligence program. Those are pretty big things to not sell to the KGB. Yeah. That's kind of up there on the list of things that do and do not do. Ooh. 
And I guess he wasn't able to get out, huh? Like, cause that's like no. usually if you're that deep, you're like, I don't know, I I got my go bag ready, I got my I got yeah. my, my 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 fake passports to to Moscow. You gotta have the weasel protocol if you're if you're being a weasel. Well, if you're gonna be a weasel, be the be, get your weasel protocol, get your little weasel hole ready, get your get your weasel coat get on, get your weasel hole ready. Put put get your get your weasel if bag. You're King when Weasel, get your weasel hole ready. <laughs> Yeah, like in the case of uh, Jerry Chung Shing Li, you get to there and you like, how bad was it? They go, about 20 informants were killed or jailed during the period that he was giving information to the Chinese. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a baddie. That's a bad one. Uh, Li is not the only former CIA officer to be convicted of working in China. In May, former CIA CIA spy, spy Kevin Mallory was sentenced to 20 years in prison after being convicted of conspiracy to transmit U.S. defense secrets to China. Former U.S. intelligence officer Ron Brockwell Hansen was sentenced in September to 10 years in prison. There's, Ugh. it's interesting too, because like the, the Chinese spy program is fascinating because let's say you're an expert in something like, you get a lot of university professors and people and researchers have followed for this, where they'll be like, hey, uh, we would, we'd love for you to come speak at this conference. You know, like yeah. you go in China and you go speak at a conference in China. I've done, I've done that. I've done that for magic. I've, I've given up the secrets of magic. Everybody, the Chinese, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, it uses mirrors, but you get, you get invited to these things. And then somebody says, oh, we got the startup here. We'd love to have you as an advisor. We'd be happy to pay you a fee to do this. And it's not usually somebody comes from you, you know, wearing a CCCP, you know, Chinese communist party, sticker or button on their jacket and says, we want you to work for us is you're working for some Chinese company or some research institute and advise, they give you a position, you're, you're, you know, professor emeritus here or whatever. And then you're getting asked more and more stuff and consulting. The next thing you know, you're telling them things you shouldn't be telling them. Yeah. Mm. No. Well, at least we don't have the president's son doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it would, it would be fascinating to hear more about, how they train agents to deal with that, to deal, if they do, to deal with social engineering or... A, I mean, that espionage. is your training. Yeah. Right? I think, I think at well, some point it's all about leverage and, and what you can get out of somebody. Well, in, in, in this case, like that was with researchers in particular, like with to, to, turn, to turn an agent or something like this. In some cases, Shang Li was likely placed Basically, he was recruited by agents in Hong Kong, and then he basically, like, he was probably very early on was was turned. And, like, there's, you know, and you start to get into, like, I'm, I'm going to give you an alternative view of history as we talk about the Red Scare in the U.S. and about the, you know, like, how we were trying to look for communists everywhere. There were communists here. There were communists working against U.S. interests. There were spies. There were absolutely people going there. The extent at which we went to accuse anybody and everybody who had ever been involved in that was was in, probably a bit insane. But part of the British government intelligence agency got completely dismantled in the 50s and the 60s. They found out that a bunch of people back when they were in college had hung out in the communist groups and stayed in contact and were feeding secrets to the Soviets. Like yeah. that legit like happened. And, and it wasn't like that was a British only thing is that. There was a lot of that going on here too, and and certain certain civil rights movements and certain other issues where there was strategically advantageous to cause strife. We're getting backing from that. Some of the anti nuclear groups were actually getting funding from the Soviets because if you could get people protesting every place you put a nuclear weapon facility, you know if you could, if you could get an organic appearing protest there, then that would slow things down. And it's like like. Like that was like legit, and you know, and we've been placing agents and moles and turning people over there too. But the idea that like ah, there weren't any Soviet agents in the United States during that period, China, or that's like silly. And we even know, Get out of here. we even know that people who were like uh, like Truman Capote, uh, uh, amazing. I mean, I'm not naming names, but naming names. Like some of these people were getting instructions like prior to world war ii when the russia was russia was aligned with germany when they had an agreement a non-aggression pact american communists were told tell everybody to stay out of the war in europe tell everybody and you'd see that in scripts you'd see this stuff they were giving the marching orders and then when germany went to war with russia that changed now now we got to get into the war and it just you'd see you could this stuff is 
in the archives, it's out there. So, yeah, I guess, you know, when it comes to espionage and, and covert, covert ops, the best one is one that people don't know about, right? Is, is by doing whatever you need to do in secret, actually in secret. It's, it's when it comes to light that, that you start to realize like, oh yeah, we do. Everyone has a ton of spying. Everyone does a lot of, does weather balloons and, and satellites. Um, we just, we just keep it from you. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes when you'll hear like, oh, they shot down, you know, uh, an American spy plane or an American, uh, you know, ship got interdicted, but we say that we were in the international zone and they say otherwise, sometimes they're right. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. they're right. There have been cases where like, uh, yeah, we were behind enemy lines. We were our, you know, behind other you know sovereign territory lines and stuff. And so yeah. we don't get a clean record on that. Very sneaky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have, uh, don't, do we have any picks? I yeah. got a, I got a, I got a, I got a pick. Pick it up. Um, and, and this is a, this is a three part thing. My, I'm only really recommend. Maybe. Oh, okay. All right. We should be able to be seen. I think we are still, uh, the, the stream is still going, which is good to know. I'm going to turn on another recording here. Okay. And let's get on 
and of course Andrew on Skype. Everyone is getting a drink really quick, getting refreshed. We got another podcast after this. We're going to do some after things. I got refreshed. Oh, my thing doesn't work. You got scars deep enough to last. They didn't want me to talk about this pick. They didn't want me to let you know that this pick kind of stinky. Hey Siri, answer. There's nobody calling right now. I don't know if you want to make a call. Uh, there's nothing like using the restroom <laughs> and hearing that sky having your AirPods in and oh, hearing not being able to do anything about the ding, 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 oh, ding, 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 ding. It's all right. And then I'm like, oh, let me just tap on my AirPods and see if that, uh, no, no, that just plays the last recording I made on my iPhone. So. Oh, no. I'll do, I have that with, um, with music where it'll, it'll be like, oh, yeah, but play resume music. And it'll have been a little too long since I was playing something on Spotify. And so it'll just play anything at random from my iTunes library. Uh, nine out of twelve. I sent a second. What is this? Is it just is it is it just gonna be a video of us freezing and skipping? Nine out of, nine out of twelve. <gasps> That's a coffee. Hey, we got a coffee. I'm doing my best to look like a uh, like a New York City cop. Oh, I feel like I just need one of them blue cups where with like the graphics on it. You know, they always have in like every mm. cop show in New York. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like the they all drink out of them same this uh, the same paper cups. Yeah, the like the jazz solo cups. No, not the. J- it's like remember the poker cup. The best ones were the ones that had the poker hand. Remember those? No, I've I've typed in blue paper. Oh, the the Greeky looking ones. Yes, there we go. Oh, okay. Famous. And yep, the other ones are the poker. Look at the look up poker like poker hand cups. Those were the cool ones. Poker. Oh, interesting. So you get your coffee. And it's got a poker hand on it. Did you do well? How'd you do? Mm. Oh, oh, that's clever. That's a clever way to do that. Okay. Uh, right. We're recording. Pick it up. We're going to pick it up here. I got to pick. Uh, I don't love this. I'm not going to recommend all of this, but I'm going to recommend... Bryce is mad. <laughs> I'm going to recommend the first of the three parts of the Netflix uh, docu- docu-series. Don't pick up the phone. Um, this is... Uh, a riveting story about the um, the strip search phone call scam uh, in mm. the uh, I want to say the late '90s to the early aughts. What what was this? Oh, so out uh, so back in the day, uh, even made into a movie. Do, 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 do. Uh, someone would call say a say a Taco Bell. Someone would call a Taco Bell and say, "I'm an I'm a police officer." Uh, this uh, a, they give a descript a generic description of employee and say this person stole money out of one of your customers' purses. Uh, the cops are too busy to deal with this, but you can either bring the employee to the police station or you can strip search them there. You can do it, the manager. And okay, I'm a cop on the phone giving you authority here. Yeah, because I'm a cop. I I, I bless you with with telephonic authority. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, a particularly bad case went on for hours. And involved many many forms of penetrative, uh, invasive abuse. Oh. Um, and uh, I would recommend not watching parts two and three, not because of any grossness, but because the investigators really um 
fumbled the bag incredibly bad this time. And the the two guys who are kind of the investigators end up being the through line, kind of the faux narrators, because there's not a narrator. And it's it's really frustrating to hear them say, yeah, we think we found the guy through all these really, really unlikely things. So the first thing we did is we went up to him and said, we think you're the guy who did this. And then that guy disappeared because of course he would. And then guess what? All of the calls stopped. So mm. I recommend watching the first episode to get an understanding of how bad this was. And then go check out the Wikipedia for the phone, the, the strip search phone call scam, because that's yeah, going to save you an hour and a half. Called, called Compliance. Oh, yeah. Which is... Uh, based on this here's here's my take and i do not cannot speak to the quality of the police work of these gentlemen here mm -hmm. when you watch police documentaries or anything that involves crime or whatever and you talk to police police fact number one are people yes fact number two some people are really good at their job mm. fact number three some people are really bad at their That's job so good. Fact four, it can be high, kind of hard for the average person to tell. This applies to doctors, things like this. You can have a horrible doctor and not know it. Yeah. Just because you never come to the point. You're like, you can have a really horrible cop investigating a case. Yeah. And sometimes I watch some of these shows and they'll be like, oh, and they didn't, they didn't, they couldn't prosecute so-and-so. And I'm like, well, they got him doing this. They got him doing that. Unless there's more to it. These were one lazy prosecutors, or the cops didn't do their job, or something. You know, you'll find out that sometimes there's just they're they're just dumb. Like yeah. you know, having family members who are in law enforcement and hearing stories about dumb things other people did, you go, yeah. oh, so yeah, yeah, and that yeah, can yeah. be frustrating because like mm -hmm. it's the my favorite is the uh, the Mitchell and Webb look, the identity killer. I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. time to play this. We have time to play a clip of this because it's super short. Oh, okay. Uh, um, this, this, of course, from the iconic Ots uh, sketch comedy show, That Mitchell and Webb Look. If, uh, if you've never seen it, please not only watch that, but watch um, their, or listen to, rather, their radio series. Britain has such a, such a great tradition of radio oh, sketch comedy. I had no idea they had that. Oh, okay. yeah. No, no that, that Mitchell and Webb sound. All right, we have a clip here. Which leads us to the unfortunate conclusion that this latest murder was also the work of the so-called identity killer. Hi, everyone. Now, Inspector Danvers will take it's your questions. Great to be here tonight. How can you be sure this is the identity killer's so, handiwork? I was well, because as I think for, for audio listeners, we're also getting nothing forever. Of his identity. So the killer has a calling card? I suppose you could say that, yes. What is it? Well, on this occasion, it was uh, a calling card. Uh, on previous occasions, he's been known to leave his birth certificate, the address of his MySpace page, and on one occasion, a series of unconnected numbers next to the three-letter word MOB. So, uh, we're looking into the possibility that there may be connections with organised British mobile crime. number. Mm. So... What have we got? Nothing, sir. All he's left this time is a passport size photograph and two recent utility bills. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The gosh, victim's wearing a shirt with the killer's oh, no. face on it. What a waste. Come and have a look at this, Sarge. Well, it's still running, sir. Should we have a look at the tape? Oh, what? So we're sitting around looking at footage of Mr. Eric Hale, Flat 2, Addington Building, Swindon, <laughs> murdering a man, and meanwhile the identity killer could strike again. <laughs> now, at this point, all we can do is just wait for him to make a mistake. Anyhow, we can let people watch the rest of it, but yeah. the Mitchell and Webb look identity killer. Um, yeah, uh, uh, great. Uh, uh, is that is that your pick, Andrew, or do you have another one? No, my pick is... Uh, I really enjoyed the first half of it. The second half I liked, but I thought the first half I liked, I think, um, still enjoyed it, and that is Tulsa King, the Taylor Sheridan show starring Sylvester Stallone, where he plays a mobster who gets out of jail after 25 years for taking the fall for his crime family and gets treated with the wonderful reward of you will, we're sending you to Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, Stallone is great. Some of the writing's really good. Some of it's um, 
you know, again, I, I really recommend you watch it though. I think it's a really neat show. Martin Starr. Oh, that's great. Like, he plays the owner of a weed shop and like the first place, you know, Stallone's character shows up to, you know, basically protect, offer protection to is that. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I mean, this Tyler Sheridan, I mean, all he does is pump out scripts, right? I mean, who knows how he has, has time to breathe. He's just, he's writing, uh, he's writing a million shows and he always does it by himself. Yeah. yeah. Taylor Sheridan. Quite the talent. Yeah. yeah. Him too. That's a secret. His hint twin brother, Tyler. <laughs> who... Yeah, that's it. You never knew that they were, they were Winklevoss in it the whole time. Sheridan, yeah. it's like you got four hands. <laughs> Uh, unless he was a really early beta user of OpenAI, look into that. Go go back into the logs and see whether or not. Oh, and, it, and it's got Barry Corbin in it, which I love the fact that if you've watched a movie in any decade or something, Barry Corbin is an actor that you'll recognize over time. And he's been in both Yellowstone and in this. Uh, so nice. Uh, and that's on Paramount, Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus, along with 1923, which is also I really liked. Justin, you got to pick. I do. Only murderers <laughs> in the building. My murders. wife and I only murderers in the building. I don't. Well, the, the, this is the thing. Is there's. All right. Oh no. The show oh, is about a, a group of people that live in a fancy New York apartment, and there's a murder. They're obsessed with true crime podcasts. They start doing a podcast about the murder in their building. They wind up solving it. That was season one. Season two, there is another complication, and uh, now they are in the midst of solving that. I got to say, the writing is just a, a, a step up in season two than season one, and I have not enjoyed... Steve Martin and Martin Short, uh, in uh, uh, like this in in years. You know, this is them kind of firing there. It's exactly in their wheelhouse. Martin Short is somebody that is so talented that it can become annoying because he's so like he's just got a routine that he's that he's amazing at, and the the character that they have him in is a has been. A uh, theater director uh, who is uh, eccentric in all the ways that you would imagine a theater director who had his heyday in the 70s would be. But Martin Short is just, and he has been his entire career, the best at volume comedy, like just decibels. Like there's just ways that he can say like, like, oh, God that are, are just funnier than anybody else who has ever done it in, in history. Selena Gomez is, is also in the show. She's great. Tina Fey plays an evil version of a uh, uh, like like the serial host. Like she's basically an evil podcast magnate oh. who is is trying to steal the thunder of our ragtag podcasters. She's not evil. She's it's just. The worst version she's of that just, person. Yes, no, yeah, she's not. No, she's not morally dubious. Although, uh, uh, there's a line in this season where she's denying her assistant a, a promotion, and she goes, "You know, when I was at the post, Kay Graham told me never be too good at a job that you hate." And she was a real c-word, so keep that in mind. <laughs> that just walks out. Uh, just. Uh, uh, an amazing, an amazing show. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really enjoying uh, this season. And as far as murder mysteries go, I think it is. Is uh, it a good one? Yeah, it's not one of those where it's like supposed to. All the pieces are obviously not in front of you, right? Like mm -hmm. you are, you are letting these pieces kind of slowly come to you, and like a podcast. There have been, I have not seen these shows. Because I'm now in a realm where I'm not going to talk about things I don't like. But I haven't seen. There's apparently some. There's a very popular movie, a sequel to another mystery movie. And then there's a, 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 a new show uh, on Peacock that is also a mystery, a murder mystery thing. Yeah. And I think. Are both they connected to? Suffer. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Uh, but uh, they, they both, from what I've heard, suffer. From the fact that 
when all of the pieces are right in front of you, it's only so interesting to watch the characters run through it. Neither you have to make the characters kind of semi-magical or you have to invent things that don't feel like they are things that you can put a circle around. Well, we don't know that. I don't know. There, there's just like a, 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 a real balance to not feeling cheated by a mystery unraveling. Mm. And this show does it really well. Aside from the fact that it's like the, the show is mostly about the characters. And that ultimately is, I think, a good thing to keep in mind when it comes <laughs> to stories is make your characters likable because you want to spend time with them. There is a kind of writing and uh, also used by somebody who wrote and directed or involved <laughs> with one of the big franchise the, the that same the same franchise pick. I look forward to seeing. We're in it. the moment. <laughs> the moment. If your attention span is like in in AI, we talk about a context window. Like you know, like GPT three is like two thousand tokens at a time, so it's like sixteen hundred words at a time it pays attention to. So if your attention span of what you're thinking about in the plot and what's going on is within like forty five seconds, you're going to be super entertained. Yeah. Don't go back. Don't think about what happened eight minutes before and how you got yeah. to here or why. And when you something happens and somebody says this happened because of this, just accept it. Don't think about that. You're going to be fine. But if you start to think about it because it's presented to you as a cerebral show, you will be hugely disappointed and realize, oh, my God, this is really not good. This is literally just trying to write that moment by moment by moment. Well, and I think one of the things that's really, really great about a well-told murder mystery is as your as the story slowly puts the light of suspicion on everybody around the circle, to me, the worth of that show is defined by what you feel when the light hits them. Whether or not they are the bad guy, whether you're like, oh, that would break my heart, or oh, I knew it, like... Yeah, there's just you need that's part of the, the the show that's part of the build is you know and this is and only murders in the building uh, uh is great at that like they they just have periodically almost every episode the light kind of shines the suspicious light shines on somebody else you have a feeling for it that feeling affects how you feel about the characters and then you move on and eventually we're going to find out and i'm sure that the final piece of evidence that will reveal everything is going to drop out of the sky in, in the final episode, but I'm not going to feel cheated by that because I will have already gone on an emotional journey wondering about everybody. I, for me, a strong mystery. And this is what I think about when I try, sometimes I write or more thrillers, sometimes I write that are more mystery. And for me, a mystery is really, I put enough clues in the beginning for you to kind of know where it goes. And sometimes a thriller is like, no, you're not going to know where it goes because the goal is not to sort of solve this. But I, I feel when it's out and out, hey, this is a mystery, and you get to the end, and you're like, literally, somebody could just interject and say, but actually, yeah, and change everything, and that's that's kind of silly. Mm. I agree. Uh, mm. Someone in the chat says that uh, I don't like somebody named Johnson. Uh, no, I love Scott. Scott's a great guy. And for the record, I've Brick. seen I've seen Brick, and I love Brick. I've seen Brick, Brick and I love Brick. Brick is phenomenal. Brick I, I is like Looper. I like I like Brothers Brothers Bloom. I, I wasn't in love, I love with Looper. Brothers Bloom. I love Looper. Yeah, I love Looper. So I love Looper. Yeah, I've Looper, seen Brick, Looper. Brothers I've seen Bloom. Looper. This is so. This is. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know that there's a style of plot. I think I, 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 I also have seen. I've seen. The pilot of Poker Face. And I love the <laughs> pilot of Poker Face. I have not yeah. seen the rest, but but I've seen the the pilot of Poker Face I, is really good. There you're losing I would, implausible deniability. <laughs> I would say, so here I would say about somebody commented, like I think the style, my argument is not that the, the quirkiness is a problem, not that any of this, is that there is stupid stuff that doesn't need to be stupid. There are things there you go, don't stop and think about this that could have been written out, they didn't care about. That's what bothers me is that you go, there, there are like legit, if we want to use the term plot hole, there are huge plot holes that could have been covered for and it would be fine. It would be like 10 minutes, 10 minutes of 10 minutes with the script and you can make something that was way less dumb. But there you go. It's not a mystery. Maybe one day it's I'll see it. A, 
Yeah. I'm really bad at games, these games. Oh, I just solved your little dinner murder mystery game in 30 seconds. But you just told us, doesn't matter. You know, like, ah, I can keep this a secret from the police and everybody. Okay, now we're, now, 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 yeah, now now Andrew's just in the ain't a cool news talk bags. I know what you're talking about. I was just not talking about anything specific. Uh, uh, (laughs) What have we been, what have we been talking? What are we seeing? What are we talking? I think, I think Ryan Johnson is an incredibly talented. Okay, all right, all right. No, 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 I I mean that. I I I absolutely absolutely mean that. Absolutely Absolutely mean that. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. We love you, Ryan. Please come on the show. What has it been? What has it been? It's been very weird. <laughs> you got that right. Oh, all right. Uh, you guys need to take a break before we do some after. Now nah, let's roll right into it. Roll right into it. Andrew, you good? I guess I'm not taking my break now. Uh, well, no, you can take a break. I'll, 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 I'll stay break. here. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah. If we're just rolling right in, then I think we can just roll right in. Let's roll right in. All right. Uh. Uh, then I'll catch you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. This may be the most important episode of After Things you ever listened to. Bum, bum, bum. Or not. But I don't- uh, I want to talk about health. Uh, yeah, let's talk about health. Let's do it. Heal. I was I I was ordering a piece of uh, health equipment, and uh, as I watched the delivery guy, I have a very long driveway. It's a very long inclined uh, drive or decline, depending upon which way you go. Sure. And uh, some delivery trucks can't make their way up, so as I'm talking to this guy as he's pushing the hand cart with uh, a treadmill up my driveway and and he said something about like yeah i i, I like started doing this because like i put on so much weight during covid and whatnot and that this has been helpful or whatever i'm like like cool you know they have gyms but i'm not gonna tell you you know but anyhow um hey, hey i said, what, I said what yeah the, one of you two made money working working out one of you paid it's true that mm. is a fair point price um I did not work out any. I didn't do. I didn't get. I didn't get in better shape, but I didn't make any money. So I failed in two columns there. And I said to him, I said, "Yeah." Although I have one friend who like worked out during COVID and got like really ripped and you know well done, and that is Mr. Justin Robert Young. Here, mm-hmm. you know, oh, while mm-hmm. you know, I'm you know sitting there eating ready to eat meals and packing away calories. Justin's you know getting cut. So um, and I've been thinking a lot more as it as you get older and you think about like, Oh shoot. Like I would like to live a longer time. Someone's got to take care of this body. (laughs) Yeah. It's not like even, even I was lucky, even at like, at like 40, I still had really good genes. Can eat Taco Bell every day and look young, but getting a lot older than that now. And it's (laughs) like, uh, um, and and you you and I knew that wouldn't always be the case. And sometimes people get stuck when they're 25. They're like, "Oh no, I never put on any weight. I don't know, like you're 25." <laughs> you know, like God bless guess you. What? Yeah, yeah. There's a window. Uh, so I've I've tried to take that more seriously. And I've one of the reasons. So I I you know we I moved to the Bay Area and I bought a house. One of the reasons I bought a house with stairs was so that if I wanted a snack or anything, I'd at least have to go up and down stairs mm. because otherwise when I'm in my apartment, it's, you know, 14 feet from my chair to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not the best. It's easy. So, it's e- yeah. It's easy. It's easy to get to when it is within arm's reach. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've decided to like, like I am, I am, I am, uh, uh, how do I describe this? Like, if I buy a thing, I've thought about it generally for a long time, sure. unless it's like, you know, a bucket of like Bazooka Joe gum. Like I'll think about it for a long time. You're like, a very informed you know, buyer. In, uh, unless unless he's word. trying to build something. In that case, he will buy yeah. every kind of PVC <laughs> pipe uh, uh, humanly imaginable and then just let it litter his apartment for the next year and a half. That's not inaccurate. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I, no. You know, if you're actually trying to buy something that you care about, that you are buying for you, that you that you really like, are are going to 
be be uh, uh, enjoying. I, I, you are a very studious studier, and and you are yeah, not. I, you, I, you don't impulse buy. I waited years before buying a house. Years before I could have afforded one. You know, I hadn't really figured out houses yet. They're only just What's now that? getting the hang of houses. They're no, working Price, out is, price is being a snide. Oh, oh yeah. now I'm being the snide. Yeah, oh, he's okay. being Mr. Snide. Oh, okay. Snidely Sorry, whiplash. I, okay. Well, I, owned, I owned before, then I <laughs> sold, and then when I wanted to kind of go bigger, you know. Well, because also you live in California now. So buying a house in California <laughs> is, is, is past a certain threshold. You've been past that threshold for a little bit, but, but you waited until, uh, you know. It was it was the right time for you to for you interest to buy. rates were so awesome and <laughs> whatnot. Yeah. Perfect timing. Uh but anyway, I, I tend to be tend to be that. Uh so uh one thing is that we just ordered it and I'm I'm curious to see and I'll tell you the justification for this. We just bought we ha- don't have it yet, we bought a tonal, which I'd been vaguely aware of and was actually a g- visual gag in a TV streaming movie that we were making fun of before. Maybe or maybe not. I, couldn't, I haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, anyhow, if you don't know about Tonal, Tonal is a very interesting thing. Tonal was actually designed by a computer scientist, computer researcher or software engineer. Um, I mean, that, get that name, get that and correct what he was. But he, this is, if folks might know that, might have seen this, this is the thing that looks like one of those, um, like the the mall directory maps that yeah. you put on your on on one of the walls of your house, and it's got the <laughs> arms that you can the resistance arms that you can do all sorts of different setups and exercises. With, with, with the idea being that it's eliminating a lot of the anxiety of working out, which is if you are doing it by yourself, you are scared that you are doing it wrong. You are scared that you are going to hurt yourself, or you are scared that you are not going to get the results that you want out of it. By having a gigantic smart display in front of you, not only can you see yourself, but you can also see yourself in relation to the uh, model that they are giving to you. And uh, uh, from what, Andrew, you were mentioning, there's also a lot of cool stuff built into the the resistance of the, the pulleys. Yeah, so Ali Arady, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his first name right, uh, he came up with this you know, six, seven years ago because... I think he was dealing with his health, realized he had like type two diabetes and, and had made the observation that when you go to the gym, the real fitness experts all seem to be doing strength training. They're not doing cardio. And as you get older, that what you really want to be doing is strength training. And he was thinking about how do you solve something with a very limited space? And so he actually built a prototype. And the idea behind this is it's got these armatures that come out and it's a cable system, but you can adjust the armatures up or down and move them. They fold up compact, manage your wall, so it takes up literally like no floor space except for like your bench or whatever you use with it. And he developed this over a series of years. It uses magnetic resistance. And because it's computer controlled, as you pointed out, Justin, you can do things like when you start to lift, there's an, you know, it's a computer system there can start to say, hey, uh, you're struggling. I'm going to lessen this a little bit and allow you to keep lifting. And yeah. it's got a lot uh-huh. of really cool capabilities. It tracks your strength over time. So every day you go use it, it measures how you performed before. And it's, it's on one hand, I first looked at it like, oh, well, it's instead of having a bunch of weights, I've got one system into the wall that can do like probably 95% of the exercises I want to do. And then I started paying attention to the fact that how, how they really, on the software and whatnot, you have guided workouts and how they've been able to use this to sort of create very customized sort of workouts. And I, uh, somebody says it looks like it can come off a wall pretty easy. You have them install it. You do not put it in yourself. They come in and they make sure they look for the studs. They put it in there because that is a big concern. So it is a bit involved to do that. I have a, a friend. Uh, her boyfriend's a trainer, and he's just raves about it. He's a personal trainer in L.A. Uh-huh. And I kept trying to find YouTube videos to sort of talk me out of it because it's pricey. They just raise the price. It's an expensive piece of machinery. And I kept and but all I saw were people who were just like, "This is great. It's really good." The biggest problem is the price, but just. Everybody was just raving about it, which is rare because uh, personal trainers will crap on everything because personal trainers yeah. don't like home equipment in general, and and uh, also physical fitness is something that is very personal to everybody. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you're a personal trainer, you're in the business of selling your solution being the solution that people should uh, uh, be be taking in. But if you're a fitness influencer, then you could probably have a little bit more leeway to be honest with your audience. This seems like a great idea, and 
I, I, uh, I'm excited to see how you, uh, uh deal with it or how, how you, how you enjoy it, Andrew, because I do think that it's a, a fascinating concept and one of the many home gym solutions that have kind of popped up. I, I, I think this is a fascinating field and I'm really curious to see where it's going to go in the next 10 years, because right now, you know, it's very expensive. If you want to get into a, a Peloton or or any of the smart treadmill things, you know they uh, uh, everybody wants to sell you a gigantically expensive piece of equipment and then also sell you a monthly membership so you can be super uh, uh, dialed into it. Or you do something like the Apple or the Nike Fitness, which is just hand weights and, and self body. Well, see, that's the other thing, right? Is that that's that's the other level down, and then. Beyond that, you can do it for YouTube essentially videos. free. You could you can just find great tutorials on YouTube, and 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 go about it. If we were to take a look at the wider idea of health, I would say for anybody who is you know emerging, we are now emerging out of the winter, right? We are emerging <laughs> out of the uh, uh the the land of infinite parties and drinking and food and, and everything. It's, it's not uncommon that people put on a little bit of weight around this time of year. Uh, the one thing that I would say that I learned, as Andrew mentioned during COVID, when I was, I was at my most healthy weight and what we would consider, you know, like fat is almost entirely diet. You know, that is diet like, is so big and pe people, people ignore diet to their detriment. Well, I mean, it's, it's, if you want to lose weight, diet is the only thing in my opinion, like you can lose the weight. And then once you've lost the weight, working out and exercising is for how you look when you don't have the weight on you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I got a friend who was obsessive about dieting, was counting every single calorie and he lost a crap ton of weight. Yeah. And then he looked like Christian Bale from The Machinist. And it was like, dude, you need to do some <laughs> you need to do some push-ups because like salute to you, you you look you dropped a lot of weight. You are no longer puffy. Your your face uh, uh, looks looks a lot more angular. Mm -hmm. That's great. That is a full body transformation. But if you want to go to the beach and feel good about yourself, you're going to need to do some some push-ups because that's, that's that's what the exercise is for is is is, is to build the muscle uh, underneath there. So, um, I don't know. This is this is I, I could I could talk about this all day. You know, the the fastest I ever lost I lost twenty. I was able to lose like twenty pounds in like thirty days. Remember when I did keto? Because like I did keto and I walked seven miles a day. Yeah. And and that was, that was like the most radical I've ever been. I, the the most radical I've ever put on muscle was when I did train for my TV show. In five weeks, I worked with a great trainer, and I was able to put on a lot of muscle and just change, just really just change the look of myself. And that was when I was at forty, and that kind of gave me this sort of false confidence of like, ah, oh, I guess I'm just built like this. And then <laughs> hit forty five. It was for me like like my my thirty five happened at forty five, and then I'm like. Oh, you know, and then you're like, ah, but uh, because I remember trying to train for Shark Week and it was not the same. It was just not the same as just five years earlier. Yeah, I, but, I, if 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 someone is wanting to get into, if so, wanting to get started, you know, there are good apps out there for calorie counting, um, and not even like I was using the the Lose It app for for a while now, for for about a year and a half or so, um, and it wasn't that I, uh really needed i really felt like i needed to strictly limit every every calorie that's going in but knowing just what the number was did did a lot to understand like oh okay you know what that's actually that portion's probably too big oh like just getting a sense of what is the right amount and that's something that you carry with you forward even if you don't change your your eating habits at all yeah you know there's noom is one of the things that i've known a, a, a few people to do and that's as much, you know, a uh, 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 psychology as it is dieting. Like, you know, one of the things that they'll do as you go through their process is, uh, you know, one of the final steps is for you to like put a bowl of candy in the center of your dining room table so you can learn to not eat it if it's there. Uh, oh. Like, 
Uh, but that's uh, that, that's huh. well into it, right? Okay, like that's yeah. th this is this is like you've already you've already bought into this idea. They are rewarding you for smaller steps, and this is one of those uh, uh, elements of like, okay, well now let's take your take your self control for a road test for seven days. Leave this bowl of M and M's out and and see whether or not you eat any of it. Uh, but you know, in in general, I would I would recommend that people count their calories. I would recommend doing it just just to see what it is. Don't even yeah. do it. In fact, I would just recommend try it without changing anything. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend don't try to do it while dieting. Yeah, try get started. just do it in general and just see what it is. Because ultimately, I know you know we we live in a very very strange age uh, of, uh, of 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 judgment and guilt. Uh, and I I I don't want to come off as this being a political statement but ultimately this is calories in calories out i <laughs> know i'm know? i'm with you i it, like i feel like calories in calories out gets such a bad name because it's too simple it makes too much sense what yeah it's, I, obviously I, it's not I, for I, everybody but i feel like generally it's good advice it's a I feel good rule out, of thumb giving. in the same way that you, yeah. you, you should not follow the ten, the, 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 the ten commandments just probably 10 good rules they should call them <laughs> maybe don't kill someone just try it uh, go read through the commandments. <laughs> Tell me, if, uh, there's like there's like six or seven good ones there. Six or seven uh, good rules. Seven good commandments. That's a C. That's they, a C. So I will tell you things that have worked for me. Uh, one is when I decide to diet or to cut back my calories, I don't use a sweet or some food that I crave before as a reward because then all yeah. you do is you obsess about it. I love Skittles. I don't say, well, if I work out, then I get Skittles because really what you want to do is you want to change your cravings. You, you want to change it to like not craving. Like I, when I get stressed, like, which is a lot now, um, like, you know, that's when like a lot of people I'll stress eat whatever. And like, I'll, you know, I bulk buy bubble gum here. And then I bought a big thing of jelly beans and I had a couple of days of eating jelly beans. And I said, this is really not good. And I put them on the shelf and I haven't touched them in a week. Um, mm -hmm. So, but the thing too is like with, with keto would help. Keto was great for me because I wasn't craving those things. I wasn't really feeling like I was missing out on stuff because I could eat a yeah. lot of food. I could eat a lot of stuff, a lot of protein, a lot of that. And I felt good. So one is to think about, like, as you said, first is just understand how many calories you're consuming. Cause you might be amazed of like, like I, I, the joke was, I think Justin is like, I could go to McDonald's and can lose weight. And the reason yes. is I know the secret if you order fries, you lose. Um, <laughs> and I would go there and I'd eat, I'd get a salad and I'd get like, you know, the chicken sandwich and get rid of the bread and just eat the chicken and the salad and do that. And, and the chicken, wasn't the no best. mayo. Yeah. Not yeah. Even the mayo. Wasn't the, yeah, oh, it wasn't yeah. the best, but like I put some balsamic vinaigrette on there. Like I'd go, yeah. but I'd go there. I'd do that two, three times a day. I'd lose weight very easily. But then the moment you say, well, let me get the fries because what you really want to do is you want to change. You just want to change what you crave. You really want to change what you crave in a way. And, and you can if you change what you're eating. When you're getting a lot of protein, it's different. The thing I do now every morning, like my dream, my dream of like having a big house was to have enough counter space to have a blender permanently there mm -hmm. so I could make myself a smoothie every day. Yeah. And How's so that going? Every, oh, amazing. Oh, so every day, okay. like. Yeah, yeah. I, I have energy throughout the day. Like, I do not crash at all. Like, I get up, throw a banana, throw an apple in there, throw some protein powder, some soy milk or almond milk, whatever. Maybe a little dash of, like, the little zero-calorie flavoring. Um, just saying. Mix mm -hmm. that up. And, like, you know, it's 1 p.m. for me here. And, you know, I could, don't have to eat. I grabbed a, had a stick of, like, beef jerky. And then... Mm. You're snacking. Good. So those smoothies... What's that? You're snacking. Mm. Oh, you're snacking. Don't, no, it's, sorry, you're Snidely. 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 Knock it off. <laughs> Bryce, it's beef. It's beef. Don't, it's fine. Uh -oh. Just don't buy How's into this. Is that sodium? Is that sodium? Don't buy into okay. this. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I was saying, I, was, I was, I really didn't know how my, I still don't know how my body works, but I would be in my 30s and I'd go to McDonald's for lunch and I eat a lot of fries and a lot of carbs and stuff. And then I would want to crash an hour later. And I yeah. never made the connection. I never, never understood what you eat affects your energy levels over time and when you get that energy. Uh, oh, like you, you, you brought up the biggest thing that I think I found in my, uh, uh, when I was really focusing on it, which is that it's patterns. And the biggest thing to me, if you want to lose weight, if you want to be healthier, it starts with sleep. It, at least it did for me. 
it, I, I got to bed at the same time. I woke up at the same time. I'm not going to judge anybody on how much sleep they need no, but I think when the they go to sleep or when they wake up. For yeah. me, it was very helpful to go to bed at 10 and to wake up at around 5.30 or 6. Yeah. That was, it, it fit my schedule. It fit my body. And, and what I found is that once my body knew when it was getting tired and when it was going to, uh, and when it was waking up, a lot of other things snapped into place. And a lot of those stress eating panic moments, I was able to handle a lot better because it wasn't my body guessing when, when things were going to happen. And I had a very erratic, very irregular sleep schedule uh, through most of my life. Like I, I loved being up super late. I loved waking up super late. It felt like, you know, just being, uh, my life was summer vacation, uh, which was, which was great. But at the end of the day, if your body is guessing when it's getting the kind of activity that it needs, then a lot of other stuff is rocky. Yeah. I know, you know, I, man, cause I, I'm kind of in that sort of situation right now. Like I don't really have a set schedule for every for the day like usually i mean we do the shows on on a weekly basis so, so i can work around that a certain bit but i don't get up at any one time every day i don't go to bed at one one time every day um and i don't have set you know meal default times i don't look at the clock and see oh it's 12 30 i should probably eat lunch i <laughs> i look at the clock and say oh it's 12 30 uh what else was i supposed to do because i i don't get into like these are the three times a day that you eat. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm completely off of that boat at the moment. Um, and it, it does make eating weird. I, sometimes I worry about like, Oh man, uh, am I eating at the right pace? Am I, am I eating? I, I think right? it's tough. I, the exact thing that Andrew described is something that I described the more that I, I, I put my body on a schedule, which is that you realize, Oh wow, this is, this is the 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 cycle of things, and and this is this is how things happen. And you and you realize that your body's more of a piece of machinery than you think, and and uh, uh, it it responds well <laughs> to to kind of moving in a, a a very specific cycle. But if you do that, at least for me, and this is more behavioral stuff. But like for me, when I settled my sleep, a lot of other things that I found very challenging, like scheduling like dieting, like exercising at the same time every day, I found a lot easier to do because I, I, if, if, I, if you can do the one thing, the sleeping thing, a lot of other stuff is, is, is a lot easier. At least it was for me. I two two things. One, do you enjoy working out? I love it. Yes. I generally do. Okay. That's good to know. Do you um, not? Are you, are you not? I mean, it's, I don't think it's a shameful thing, but just some people don't like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I need to adjust because like when I, the routines that I knew were like, when like had it like, I was taught a style of like how to get like fast, like how to get like really in shape really fast. And yeah. so the workouts I have are painful, painful, yes. almost you want to vomit kind of thing. And I probably, and not a sustainable thing. And clearly- <laughs> because I just dropped them was that was a problem I ran into was that style was great. If like, ah, oh, you got to be on air in six weeks. This is the way you work out versus this is what you need to do for the rest of your life. And so I think I need to adapt to that. So, yeah, what I, what I found during COVID was I like running. So, so that is something I, I enjoy cardio. Um, I enjoyed going for a three mile run every day, every morning. And I also found, and this is something where it's like you kind of compound wins on wins on wins, but like I found that if I rolled out of bed and immediately worked out, mm -hmm. like that's the first thing I do is I drink some water because I always wake up dehydrated and then I go out and I, and I work out, then the rest of my day is immediately better. I'm way more energetic. I, I know I can do a lot more. So I would do that. And then during COVID, I found a 15 minute workout. It listed, it, it lasted for 15 minutes and it was very simple. It was five burpees, 10 push ups, 10 squats, and just do that as many times as you could in 15 minutes. Go as slow. If it's a, it's a crap day, then you don't do a lot. If, you're, if you really are trying to break your record, then, then you really start pushing yourself a, a, a little bit more. And that's, 
that's something to keep in mind when it comes to working out but between cardio and muscle training right i mean in terms of like running your pace will probably can can get better over time but um uh but strength training there's you kind of always want to progress just a little bit at least in my experience with some of that. Yeah, I, I would I would actually defer to Andrew because Andrew's done a lot more kind of very specific uh, uh, strength training. A lot of the stuff that I've done is just general physical fitness. Uh, and it's only now I've, I've been doing Orange Theory for over a year that uh, I I have really developed more muscles in my in my arms, shoulders and and chest. Like I was I was doing OK with that uh, workout that I was doing before but i did not get the muscle definition in in my upper body and arms like i have lately and that's you know a 30 minute uh strength block every day uh along with um mixed in with you know it's a 30 minute cardio kind of treadmilly thing and then rowing which is a little bit more of a hybrid between uh the 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 two of them but uh yeah it's I mean, I almost, I hate, I can talk about health stuff forever uh, because it is something that I found very, very fascinating over the last three years. The more that I've delved into it, the more that I've kind of gone on my own journey with it. But at at the same time, I always feel this compulsive need to qualify. This is a personal journey. I I cannot say it enough because the one thing that I hate the most are strident health opinions because it is, it is not, not, it's not a one size. If you're not doing thing. twelve back lat blasts every day, then you're really just not. Well, yeah, and that gets into part of the problem that, like, I if <laughs> I am not a health expert at all, uh, but like one of the things I've observed is that trainers are often like math teachers. They were naturally inclined to it. They were the people in high school that were doing track, loved to do this, always nonstop, had that energy level, had a metabolism that supported that, and. Or the other category is there are people who got into fitness because they want to look better and then they realize, oh, I'll become a trainer. I've dealt with, I've seen some trainers like this person should not be training anybody because, you know, you'd see trainers who are not in shape and you're like, how, how good is your advice if you can't follow it? Mm. And, uh, but that being said, it's like, I think the really good ones are like really good math teachers. They're naturals at it and their world of, their world is very different than our world, you know, or another person who's just sort of going like, this is painful. This sucks. You know, like I don't, feel this way and a good one should understand that i i i i had an extraordinarily negative experience with a personal trainer at a gym in oakland where i was just getting done with my back stuff and i wanted to work with a trainer because i uh part of when my back stuff started to go bad i was working out in a gym and so i was like all right let me work with a trainer just so i can get into the world of lifting again but have somebody watch me and and we'll be able i'll be able to point out where i have certain pain and he was okay initially and and during the first few classes he was like hey look you got to track everything you got it especially with lifting you got to track everything if you don't track it it didn't happen it's it's not worth it what you got to do is make sure that you're tracking 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 that you're always pushing you're always moving and then i noticed he wasn't tracking me after a few weeks and I was paying. It, it was expensive. This was not cheap. And so he keeps, boy, did he remember at the end of every month to see if I would re-up for another eight-pack of, of, of sessions. But at a certain point, I was like, I, I, I confronted him. And I'm like, hey, man, what did I do now? And he's like, whatever weight I had just lifted. And I'm like, what did I do last week? And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. And I'm like, didn't you tell me that tracking is everything? And he's like, well, yeah, you know, I, I got you. I got you. And I'm like, well, no, you don't, because I'm no longer coming here. <laughs> this was, I felt ripped off. I felt cheated. And uh, it it really, if I go use a personal trainer again, yeah. I'm going to be doing a lot more research. And now, I at least, that's the other thing, is huh? I know more about how I respond to physical fitness and what my own set of motivations are that I would know what to ask of a personal trainer now in a way that I didn't before. I would greatly encourage anybody, if you are starting a fitness journey, do not start with a personal trainer. Start start getting your 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 diet 
in yeah. in order start just find doing the machines anything. that you like 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 main was saying watch your diet and walk a lot like that is fine that is that is perfectly valid yeah. just to get a sense of what it means to lose weight and what it means to feel those endorphins if you uh, get greenlit for a tv series though and you need to get in shape fast if you do what i did Find well, but, out who trains the Marvel actors and get one of those. There guys. we go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find find Michael B. Jordan's trainer and uh, and see and see what, what kind of availability. Because I found one of those trainers and it worked great. But also that was what I said. I got I got that movie get in shape fast movie workout, not lifestyle training. Yes, exactly. And and that was uh, uh, something where, where you had you had an end date <laughs> and you had motivation to do it. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would say in general, just gym trainers, just, and, and boy, are they out like, like flies right now. They are all, if you're, if you got that gym membership, they're going to hit you up and they're going to say, oh, there's a free thing. And then they're going to hit you up for eight lessons or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would encourage anybody, if you're just starting at any age, if you're just starting to try to take this stuff seriously, focus on the diet first and, 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 and go from there. I uh, uh th this will lead into to my pick for for after things. I, a couple, when I when I was starting to get into some of the exercise and a little bit of strength training, uh, I was using the G G Fit app, J E F I T, uh, and I'm sure that uh, I I don't know the status of it today. I'm I know it's still around and I'm sure it still works. But what I liked about it when you know you mentioned tracking, Justin, mm -hmm. and because I'd only ever use this app, which has you track every uh set that you do i it was not it, it, that's not a ridiculous i agree with that claim like the g the the this app and i'm sure plenty of them do it uh, you tell it how much weight you're going to do and how many reps you're going to do uh and it gives you uh i think it's called a one rm there's like a metric where you gauge how much weight and reps uh, as an exercise does and that's like an equalizer of like performance so like okay, if I'm gonna do ten, if I'm gonna do ten, uh, ten reps of like twenty pounds, that's X. Um, the idea being, um, if you keep increasing your reps, that one RM number slow uh, goes up slower and slower and slower. So it's incentive to push the weight higher. So as you push weight up, you need less reps to get that same uh, metric. And the GFit app was nice because it would just show you that it would just do the math while you were in the gym. It would just Hey, okay, that's going to put me up. So, and so that felt like I had a metric I could follow at my own pace of, you know what, this is, this is pushing me forward. I'm pushing forward just a little bit more today. Um, and, and it had, uh, uh, illustrations and some guides on how to do different, different workouts, but that, that, I mean, I still have it. I don't, I think I was paying for a premium subscription for it for a while, but I, that, that is what stuck with me through the strength training I've done so far. And uh, I, I think it's it works pretty well, even if it's a little Spartan. Good stuff. Is that uh, your pick? That's my pick. G Fit. Health wise, man. Well, would I, I? I forget what calorie counting. In fact, you want to know what? I need to do another calorie audit because I just went through a dry January, and so I cut out a lot of calories, and I really didn't lose a ton of weight. So I'm like, you want to know what? I need to take another spin on uh, on on the, uh, the 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 weight uh, or the, the the calorie counting. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, my my pick. Well, Bryce, you have lose it there, right? Yeah, I really liked using lose it. All right, that'll be my pick because I'm gonna try it. They've got the database of stuff, so you can scan things and pull. You know, oh, this is chips. This is lunch meat. What have you? I I liked lose it for that. Andrew, my pick is fitness trackers. Whether it's an Apple Watch, whether it's a Fitbit get something get something that's keeping track of movement and whatnot because just having that baseline as a great oakland trainer once said <laughs> and completely forgot yeah <laughs> you don't measure it doesn't matter no but it is very helpful to be able to look and see oh i walked this much today i did this you know i did that i i got the apple watch ultra which um i like it doesn't feel too big i've never really liked to wear a watch very long i've kept this on longer than any time i've ever had an apple watch regular apple watch I got that because too, it's like if all of a sudden I fall down and have a heart attack, I'd love for something to be able to like, you know, alert call for service. Although we don't have cellular service where I live. So, Oh no, I'm going to die. 
Uh, but that being said is I like something that keeps track of that. And I'd recommend there's a lot of different fitness trackers out there. It doesn't have to be an Apple watch. There's other ones. My wife has a Fitbit. She loves it. She's very happy with it. So get in the habit. I would say just get the habit because these things are going to become more capable. You're going to see what they do now is remarkable when you think about what they can do from getting measurements of you know, the different measurements they get. Yeah, the, the capability with the, yeah. There's actually I've seen tech specs and designs and stuff for like one of the biggest limitations is what the FDA says you're allowed to kind of be able to do with it because uh they can do a lot. They're going to be doing a lot more. Let's put it that way. They're going to be doing a mm. lot more. Yeah. And so I think getting the habit now is good. Yeah. And 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 finding a way to gamify. I feel like gamifying exercise helped me the most in terms of whether it was keeping, you know, keeping running, walking, or going to the gym. Uh, anything that puts you in the right habit and kind of made it feel like okay, I'm accomplishing it. I can see a metric at least. That's why I like the G Fit thing because I could look at that number and say the number is going yeah. up. I, my my final yeah. thought my final thought on this is that ultimately what you want to get to is a self reinforcing pattern where you are enjoying the benefits of diet and exercising either being it appreciating the physical changes in your body appreciating the energy like if if you are at a point where you treasure what you have gotten out of this it reframes your mind almost completely in, in, in a way that you wouldn't have been able to think of before. Yeah. I would say uh, a thing that I loved, but it just got boring after a while was the ring fit by Nintendo. Um, oh yeah. I wish they kept, cause that thing's like what five years old now. I wish they kept coming out with new ring fit games, games that use that device. Cause the ring con I thought mm -hmm. was a great, Great device, really, really cool. And I think there was such an opportunity for them to kind of expand in that space. But I think the team working on that's not going to be working on anything in that space. So sad because I thought that was such a cool device. Sad. That that, yeah. yeah, sad. Well, and, and you know, that game, uh, when it, you know, it, they were even updating it pretty significantly, at least in the, the couple of years after it came out, to do more, um, give you more like, fitness playlists and options and and some new games but yeah they haven't i'm surprised they haven't expanded that or tried to tap into that market of i i imagine they have to sold a lot of these you know it was sold out for such a long time because it hit at just right at the perfect time for covid i don't know i i think there's a huge opportunity out there i think one of the next big platforms we might see is a really gamified fitness mirror or something yeah because you can the, the hardware is super cheap now. It's now comes down to the software pop because even doesn't even have to be like a tonal with the armatures, but literally a fitness mirror or something with because body tracking, all that. Like, I think my predictions we're going to see somebody come out with. I'd love for it to be like Nintendo, but somebody come out with like the a really good gamified fitness mirror because it's just someone's going to do it and they're going to do it cheaper and they're going to and and yeah. and that's going to be the crazy, crazy, crazy device. Because yeah. the model will be you're going to pay for your month to subscribe to stuff and buy add-ons and stuff, and you yeah. can do you can, all sorts of cool stuff. So we'll see. Yeah. Maybe it's Bryce. Maybe Bryce will make this. Yeah, it's going to be. I, I, in my head, I'm already thinking like if you could get if you could figure out the perspective that the person was viewing the angle the mirror from, and you could figure out a 3D model of the position that they're supposed to be in. Could there, you... There's open source kits can do that. You all of that is out there now. And like that's it's it literally it's the the hardest part of it is now solved. It's just a matter of somebody figuring out how to make it fun yeah. and make a game, which is why we need somebody who loves games like you, Bryce. <laughs> That'll be it. Um, yeah. Keep watch this, gentlemen. Space. It's been after. Hey. All right, Andrew, Justin, thank you very much for some podcasting thank today. You guys. Yeah, I gotta use the bathroom. Bye bye. Bye, man. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We are going to be back. Uh, not tonight. No marbles tonight. Marbles is back next week. Uh, we might do some more family feuding over the weekend. I gotta. I need to win the car. We have to win the car. It's ridiculous that I cannot win the car. Um, so stick around for that. Monday, Cord Killers is back here on twitch.tv slash night attack, followed by a great night on Tuesday. We're back. The power's on. The power came on like an hour before we started the stream. Not even that, like 30 minutes. So, uh, <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your Friday and your weekend. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.